This is the Epoch Batteries 48 volt, 100 amp hour, big, big battery. It weighs 96 pounds. Yep, 90. This is the empty box. This battery is pretty awesome because stuff like this didn't even exist a few years ago. You could not get a 100 amp hour, 48 volt battery that you could buy for under $2,000 that fits in a box this big that you could use in a boat. That didn't exist. And later in this video, we're gonna take this boat out with these two batteries to do a little bit of a test. Epoch Batteries makes this. And this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. And I don't know if you can see this right here. Used for boats. That's right. It is marine rated. What that means is it has waterproof ratings. So the case on the outside of it is much better than some of the cheaper lithium iron phosphate batteries you can get on Amazon. So that's one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing marine applications is to look for batteries that are marine rated. And that marine rating is IP67. And that's what you want to look for because otherwise it might not be suitable for putting in a boat. You might be wondering, why do I need and why do I have this big, giant, nearly 100 pound battery? And that's because I run this electric outboard right here. This is the E-Propulsion Spirit Plus 1.0 three horsepower equivalent electric outboard motor. This is the battery that comes with the E-Propulsion Spirit Plus 1.0. It is not inexpensive and it's limited in its range. Here's a look at the runtime and range from the E-Propulsion website. At max power, the motor uses 1,000 watts. In that 1,000 watts, that gives you 6.2 miles per hour of top speed. And at full power, that has a runtime of one hour and 15 minutes, which gives you a range of about 7.8 miles on a calm lake. Now, if you just take and dial that motor back less than one mile an hour difference, to 5.3 miles per hour, that gives you runtime of two hours and 30 minutes. So you're going one mile an hour slower, but you've doubled your amount of runtime and you've almost doubled the amount of range and you're only using half as much power as you are at full power. So if I wanted to increase the range of my electric outboard motor and be able to have much more runtime and go a whole lot farther, without worrying about the battery, I could get a second battery for this. This battery is 28 amp hours. However, for just a little bit more, I could get this battery here. The Epoch battery is 100 amp hours, which should allow me to go a whole lot farther than one of those. And before I could do anything with this battery, I actually had to do the initial charge first. Uh, it didn't come with a charger, so I used the Belieb battery charger that I got to work on my Newport battery. This thing was 43% whenever I started, and so what I did was I put it on the lowest setting there was and let it do a nice slow charge. Apparently that's supposed to be best for these lithium iron phosphate batteries. And because it's such a big battery and I had it set at such a slow setting, it literally took two days for this battery to charge all the way up to 100% capacity. But in the future, I won't need to charge it up that way because typically it's not going to be run down that low. And also I don't need to always charge it on the lowest setting. So this is the cable that I got from Tiny Boat Nation. The one they show on their website looks a bit different. I think it has a switch on it or whatever. So I don't know what kind they're shipping right now if they're shipping this one or the one with the switch on it. But this is the one I have and it's about six feet long. So what I've done right now, just to be able to test it out to make sure it works, is I've disconnected the cable from the proprietary battery, and I've connected it to my extension cable that's hooked up to my new battery. And this plugs in very nice and secure, and it has this rotating clip right here to keep it really, really tight. Now all we need to do is switch the new battery on. Then we turn the power on on here. That's a good sound and we should be able to operate.
it works. Next morning, I decided to get the boat ready to head on out. So I actually bolted the battery to the floor of the boat, and then I have the cable running back to the motor. I double checked the battery. It was at a full 100% charge. So this morning, what I'm doing is I'm heading on a six nautical mile journey across the Magathy River. It seems to be pretty calm this morning as I'm setting out. And the boat I'm taking is my 17 foot whaler. If you don't know about this boat, this is a very waterlogged old whaler. And this is a three horsepower electric motor on here. So we're not getting any kind of speed or efficiency out of this operation whatsoever. I have the e-propulsion battery mounted on top of the motor, but I'm only intending to use that if I need to in case of emergency. I plan to do this whole entire trip with this 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery. 20 minutes into our journey, we still have 98% battery left. So we're looking really, really good. So let me take this opportunity to let you know about my coupon code with Tiny Boat Nation. This big Epoch battery, the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus, the extension cable, all of those things are all available from Tiny Boat Nation. And I can get you a 5% discount if you want to order through Tiny Boat Nation. Use my coupon code Wayne to get a 5% discount off your order. I'm gonna put a link to Tiny Boat Nation store in the video description. Now I've never run my e-propulsion spirit this far before. I usually run for a few hours at varying speeds and that's really all I'm out for at a time. So this particular journey is to be able to test going a longer distance and going at maximum speed pretty much the whole time for that journey because the proprietary battery should only last an hour and 15 minutes running at full speed. This one should last a lot longer than that. I'm thinking maybe three to four hours running at full speed. And I'm not sure exactly how fast I am going. In their tests, they were going six miles an hour. And when I tested it on my 12 foot boat, I couldn't quite get six miles an hour out of this motor. But this is a 17 foot boat so I don't even know if I'm getting five miles an hour out of it. As you can see from here, I am running it at full throttle and I intend to keep it at full throttle for the three mile trip all the way across the river and back. While we're running across the river, let me take an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about this battery. I'm not a super geek when it comes to understanding all of the technology with these batteries, but this battery is Bluetooth, so I can check the status of it with my phone. And apparently this battery is also heated and cooled, meaning that it actually can handle different temperatures and extremes because things inside of the battery will help maintain the correct temperatures for the cells inside of the battery, which is very cool because this is a big heavy battery. And now that I've got it bolted into this boat, I may actually leave it in this boat. I'll probably put a cover over top of it to protect it from the elements but I plan to actually leave this sit in the boat for the rest of this season. So let's continue with our journey. As I mentioned before, I am only running a three horsepower electric outboard on this 17 foot whaler. So we're not getting speed. We're not getting a lot of power. That's not the point of this. The point is to try to see whether or not I can make this go for a much longer distance than many people say these things are capable of doing. Because no matter what, this is still a three horsepower equivalent motor. So the real shortcoming with these that a lot of people talk about is the range and the runtime. And this gigantic battery really pretty much takes that off the table because realistically, people who want to take a longer journey or go farther, they're not going to be running a motor that is this slow. A three horsepower motor is not what you use if you're going to take a longer journey. However, if you're boating around a lake and you want to scoot around a little bit and also be doing some trolling, this motor might be able to be the one trick pony to be able to let you be out on the lake all day long and not have to worry anything about recharging. 
So now I've made it across the river. I have traveled over three nautical miles to get into this other creek. There's a restaurant down here, and there's actually some really cool boats to look at in this creek. I mean, check out this boat right here. This thing is really, really nice. I don't know if it's designed to look historic or if it just is a really old boat. Either way, it's very cool. Love to go out on that sometime. And now I'm gonna head back home. Taking a look at our battery situation, we still have 84% of our battery left. So I'm gonna wind it up and we're gonna head back across the river. This time we're going against the wind and it's a little choppier out here. Not quite as smooth of a ride as I had coming here. Check the drain plug real quick, which I actually put inside of the boat based on some other people's recommendations to put it inside of here. Seems to be working great. And now we're heading back to our home port. As I got back in our creek, I found that we're at 77%. So we're really doing great in terms of battery consumption. But for some reason, the display is showing me that I can only run for three hours when possibly I can run for longer than that. So in conclusion, this is a very capable battery and Paired with this motor, it provides a whole lot of range. Now, it is pricey. However, it's a lot cheaper than these things used to be. And it's a very sophisticated battery. There's only a few people out there that may really need or benefit from something like this. But if you do, this is the battery for you. One of the things I was considering doing with this boat was adding a solar roof. But this battery, combined with this electric motor, provides me so much runtime and range that I don't see any benefit of putting a solar roof on this boat other than to be able to charge it whenever it's sitting up in my yard. Thank you very much for watching. And if you're interested in my e-propulsion electric outboard motor, here's the video about that. And stay safe out there on the water.